Good afternoon. Just excited to be back here in Alabama. We hadn't had an official SEC media day in a few years, so I almost forgot what it felt like. Uh, but I tell you this, it does feel better um, knowing that when they show your name across the screen at the bottom, it won't say Owen 16. So we've come a long way here at the University of Mississippi. I am elated to still be the head coach there, and I'm excited to continue to be a part of what I think is the best conference in the country, the Southeastern Conference. Hi, Coach A.P. Stedham, WHEP. How does one uh, move from 0-16 to winning? And you know, how many changes do you have to make, not only with personnel on your team, but around the team? Well, you know, that's a great question. I said before, you know, that year was definitely a character building year for me personally about what my standards were going to be and how I wanted to be as a coach. But I think any program that is having success is not doing it without winners um, and, and really talented people. And I'm just not talking about players. I'm talking about staff um, and then obviously administration. I think it's a group effort. Uh, Ole Miss has really been uh, intentional about making sure that uh, we got whatever we need to be successful, and we got out and worked really hard and recruited and brought in some talent, and that's how you win. Up front. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, I was hoping you could speak a little bit about Shakira Austin, uh, not only losing her, obviously, but <clears throat> just what she brought to the, w the WNBA this past year, mm -hmm. as well as also the gold medal she won with Team USA. Well, I, I mean, obviously, I'm a Shakira Austin fan. I thought that she had an incredible rookie campaign. Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I remember having conversations with a lot of GMs and head coaches in the W and just saying that I didn't think that they've seen our best basketball just because of the coverages that she got in, every night in the SEC. Whereas in the W, you know, they have three second rules and, and a lot of high level players. And so you were able to see her stretch her game and, and have a lot of one on one matchups. Defensively, she's always been pretty strong. And um, I, I, I honestly don't think that you've seen her best. I think she's going to continue to expand her game under Coach T. Bolt and the, and, and the Mystics and with the leadership that they have. And I think the best is yet to come. And, uh, and everything that she's receiving is, is not a surprise to anyone that has been around and had a chance to watch her play. I do think she's the future of uh, the WNBA. Um, I don't know when, but uh, you know the W is in a good hand, in good hands with people like herself, Ryan Howard, and the other. I think Nalissa Smith and the other rookies that they had. As far as our season is concerned, and what she's done for the program, she's totally impacted us and and brought notoriety along with the rest of the team and players that contributed last year. And we're excited about moving forward and using that as a springboard to continue to reconstruct and build. Right here, second row. Hey, Coach, how you Hi. doing? Um, I want to ask this question. So I know last year we talked about the fact that you, you have this mindset of the standard is the standard. Yeah. When looking at the players that you have coming back and more specifically looking at the impact of a player like Madison Scott, mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit about you know, what her impact will be going into this season? Well, you know, this is Madison's third year. And so we've talked about leadership at immediately at the end of her second uh, sophomore campaign. And Maddie is anxious and ready to step into that role, but that role looks different. So it's kind of cool as a head coach to watch her kind of navigate and figure it out. But luckily for her, she has people like Maya Taylor, who's incredibly experienced, has Final Four experience uh, next to her. And then um, Angel Baker, who has two years of NCAA tournament experience before us and was six women of the year, and then her running mate, Snuda Collins, that has gone through the journey. So I think uh, 
we have a good group that is around uh, Maddie, and she doesn't have to feel like the weight is on her shoulders. Uh, our team is going to be uh, completely diverse and versatile and uh, just focus on playing advantage basketball, and that's going to fit uh, with how much development she's had in the off season. Right here in the middle. Hi, Coach. Kevin Hi. Skarbinski from the SEC blog. What does it say about the progress of your program that a player as accomplished as Maya mm -hmm. would move, uh, make an unusual move from one <laughs> rival to another? And as yeah. you said, she's seen high highs mm -hmm. with the, the Final Four and, and everything she accomplished there. Yeah, I think Maya was just looking for a fresh start. You know, she had gone through a lot of change at uh, Mississippi State. And so this was just an opportunity for her to kind of tell her own story. I feel like her her whole, whole path before now coming to Ole Miss has been filled with a bunch of change and and whatnot. And so this is an opportunity for Maya to tell her story in the way that she would like to do it. And I think it's a testament of our program. She, for three years, has been able to watch us up close and personal. And so, I mean, and she lives 40 minutes away. And she was able to see the growth that we made every year and wanted to be a part of continuing and helping us do that while writing her own story. Any more questions? Okay, Coach, thank you. Thank you. Luck.